So in my last video, I pretty much wrapped up all of the below the neck features of R2-D2. I had the drive motors, the dome motor, and the Arduino all connected and running just fine. But the piece that was missing from that obviously was the dome. It wasn't really connected. Um, and so that's the last piece of the puzzle in designing this system is how do you properly provide power and signal up to the dome? So uh, there's three components that I'm gonna need to use in order to achieve that. Uh, the first is a slip ring, and we'll talk about that. Uh, then to uh, finish the connections, I'm using a mag tag. Uh, this is pretty cool, and I'll tell you what that's all about. And then finally, uh, I've got this little uh, voltage regulator. Uh, when I finished my dome, this is going two years back, uh, I only ran it off of a five volt uh, bench power supply. Uh, but now I'm going to be providing 24 volts into the dome, and I need to be able to step that down to a safe 5 volts for the Marduino boards. So these are the three pieces that uh, need to all be connected in order for me to wrap up the design. So let's take a closer look at each one of these. So if you've ever wondered how R2's dome can rotate continuously without the wires getting twisted and tangled, the answer to that question is almost always a slip ring like this. Uh, yes, there are some builders who build their domes to be entirely self-contained with their own power supplies or batteries um, and RC receivers and so forth, but those are far less common than uh, domes connected using slip rings. And in essence, a slip ring uh, it allows an electrical connection to be made between a stationary bottom barrel, which is this ring and everything below it, and then a rotating assembly. Um, and so the wires can spin continuously and there's no chance of any sort of tanglement. Uh, this size of slip ring is, is pretty typical of the smaller size that you're going to find on Amazon. You can get them with any number of wires, uh, usually from 2 up to about 12. This is a 12. Um, and the barrel diameter is 12 or 13 millimeters, which is exactly the size um, in one of the Baddeley uh, motor mount designs. This little piece there uh, is suspended in the middle of R2's body, just below the neck. So when it comes time to picking a slip ring, the general consensus is usually more wires are better. Uh, and that probably stems from the fact that these wires are really thin. In fact, if we were to, to take a look at one of them um, up close, this blue wire here is 22 gauge hookup wire. So this white wire, this individual wire here is probably only about 30 gauge. Um, and when you start thinking about current that gets passed through wires, uh, the thinner the wire, the lower its current carrying capacity. So this is another argument for passing higher voltage into the dome because when you pass higher voltage, you're going to cut down on the current or you have fewer amps. Uh, amps are what make the wires get really hot and potentially melt. So, um, so right away, you want to avoid carrying uh, high current through these wires. Um, and then you can, uh, by having more wires, you can double, triple, or in this case, um, I've got 12 wires in this, in this slip ring. I'm devoting five wires uh, each to positive 25 or 24 volts. Um, and ground, and then just leaving the two wires for my signal. Uh, the yellow wire will take the serial connection from the Arduino to the master Markduino, and the white wire is going to take the MP3 signal back down into the body. So um, the more wires you can, you can sort of use and distribute that uh, power current, uh, the better off you're going to be. So in terms of preparing the slip ring uh, to be installed in the body, uh, it's really just a matter of installing the, uh, the power connectors of your choice. Um, and one of the benefits here, I think, uh, of the Anderson power poles is that the red and black uh, connector ends can be separated and then linked together. Uh, it actually makes it a lot easier. Uh, you can fit these through individually, whereas uh, a single connector would be too big to go through that hole. So that was kind of nice. Uh, and then I also have a DuPont connector here for my two data lines. And this is on the, the body side of the slip ring. Uh, on the dome side, um, I've just attached ferrule connectors uh, to each of the 
uh, the power leads as well as my two signal wires and how those connect into the dome we'll get into when we start talking about the mag tag but uh i had this one um all hooked up and connected and everything was working pretty well um, but even though i'm passing the smaller uh current or the higher voltage through this the slip ring um, these thin wires just kind of bug me i really wasn't wasn't too confident in them. So I started looking for a beefier um, slip ring, one that can handle higher current if needed, even though chances are it's this is a matter of, of safety over necessity. Um, but I did find one. And I found this guy. Uh, now this guy obviously is much bigger. Uh, it only has six wires, but each of these wires is 18 gauge. Uh, so if we hold up our 22 gauge hookup wire. You can see that each of these is, is actually a fair bit thicker than that. Um, so this obviously puts my mind at ease in terms of whether or not uh, these wires are going to overheat. Uh, but then of course it did create an additional problem and that is what, what to do about this. Well, it just so happens that uh, in the Baddeley files, there is an alternate motor mount uh, with a 24 millimeter diameter hole. Uh, and that is going to fit this one just perfectly. So um, yeah, so part of the reason for the delay was uh, hunting down some replacement parts. Just like before, um, I've connected the power pole connectors, which unfortunately now that I've got a 24 millimeter hole, the benefit of these being able to be separated is kind of moot. Um, and then the, the 18 gauge wire was almost too thick, uh, to crimp the DuPont connector on there, but I did manage. Uh, on the other end, I have ferrule connectors for the power. And then it did turn out that the, uh, uh, ferrules for 18 gauge wire aren't going to fit into the, um, into the mag tag. So I'm just going to use, um, the bare wire into the screw terminals. Uh, but this is what I've decided I'm going to use for my slip ring. Uh, and again, I think it is definitely overkill, but it's a matter of, of me wanting to uh, allay any fears that I might have about you know current capacity through the slip ring. So that covers the slip ring. Uh, let's talk about uh, the mag tag and what that's all about. So this little cool little thing here is a mag tag or magnetic connector, um, and this is uh, this is offered through um, Astromech. Um, uh, his name is T on Astromech, but you can also go to the website Dejaric Creations, uh, where he offers mag tags in different sizes. This is uh, currently the smaller of the three that he offers. Um, and what this allows you to do is uh, it provides a nice easy way to remove the dome uh, completely without having to unscrew and disconnect a bunch of different uh, wire connectors. Um, essentially, there are, there are two pieces. Um, this end is fixed, uh, usually onto a dome plate or, uh, something that's attached to the Lazy Susan. In the case of the Baddeley design, uh, this actually gets attached to the crossbar of the dome ring. And then this end here, um, is connected to the wires from the dome. Um, so you continue the power and the data connections. Um, and then this just dangles from the dome and this is fixed on the, on the crossbar. And so... Uh, they just clip together. Uh, so this is actually a really, uh, really cool thing to be able to do. Now, uh, they do recommend uh, that the dome power connection be fused, which um, I will be doing. Uh, and also that you know, the droid really should be powered down before disconnecting uh, the dome, which kind of makes sense anyway. Um, so this will take the, um, the ferrules that I had attached to the dome side of the, of the slip ring. Uh, the two larger ones into the power connection, and then uh, the two data connections into any of these connectors here, as long as I connect the, the matching ones from here into the dome. So that's a really pretty cool thing. So the final piece of the puzzle, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, was uh, the step-down converter for the uh, 24 volts. Um, when I previously set this up, um, this was actually the same voltage converter that I was that I had attached to my temporary electronics board. Uh, this is from uh, Pololu, um, 
and uh, it's really easy. It takes input voltage here, output voltage there. Um, it can take anywhere from, I think, 6 volts to, I think, maybe 32, and it will always output 5 volts. Um, this is actually an older model. Um, the ones that they make now are, are actually more like this. Um, so similar size, um, but uh, I already had this one pretty much set, so I was going to go ahead and use this. It's small enough to, to put in the, uh, in the dome. I did have to, um, to use Fusion 360 and create a little mounting bracket like this. I can hot glue the mounting bracket into the dome so that uh, I can still remove this uh, if I need to. This particular uh, voltage regulator can handle up to, I think, 9 or 10 amps, which should be way more than I need. Uh, but again, I'm going for, uh, for safety rather than, uh, than just you know, pure convenience. So uh, this will need to be mounted into the dome so I can pass the 24 volts into that. And then the output from this will feed each of the Markduino boards directly. So let's see if we can get all this stuff hooked up and see where we end up. All right, so I have installed the voltage regulator in the dome. And the output from that is feeding both uh, Markduino boards directly with the 5 volts. And I have my two signal wires, the yellow one going uh, to the input on the, mas on the master, and the white one going from the MP3 output. And all of these are now attached to the second half of the mag tag. Uh, be sure you take advantage of the strain relief there. Uh, you don't want um, to be pulling directly on these, on these connections here. Uh, but yeah, that's, that should be it for the dome. Um, let's take a look at the rest of it. All right, so here is the body with the motor mount installed. Uh, you'll see the slip ring is held just underneath this crossbar on the dome gear. And you see where the mag tag has been uh, attached uh, off to the side. This bar is a little bit flexible, uh, so I, I did position it a little bit more toward the edge. Um, it actually is pretty rigid right there. Um, keep in mind when you are mounting your dome gear or your dome motor, uh, you don't want it flush with the top because that, that crossbar is going to get in the way there. Um, and also those uh, those screws there to hold the motor mount in place are a, a bit of a challenge to get in there. Um, that, third screw, that third screw that you see down there, I use that to hold the backing piece in place. Um, you need three hands otherwise to get all that stuff installed. Uh, but yeah, this uh, seems to be working pretty well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make some extension cables so I can see... Uh, see if everything works with the dome in place. Stay tuned. All right, so I added a couple of extension cords so I can power the dome motor and all the dome electronics. Uh, the uh, wiring harness is going through the slip ring and the mag tag, and dome rotation is working. So... But the only thing I've noticed is there's a little bit of, it stops really abruptly, and there's a little bit of oscillation at the end there. But overall, I can go really slow, and I can turn on the dome automation mode. So now I can put the controllers down, and every few seconds, it'll rotate a little bit and say a little something. So the shadow control system that uses these two uh, move controllers, and there's about a million and one different button combinations that I need to learn uh, to really be able to do everything when I want to. I think I can do, there we go. And... So I think that's probably going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, this basically completes the electronic system. Uh, at this point, my next step is to uh, rearrange everything and build it on a smaller board to fit inside R2. And um, uh, I'll be documenting that process a bit as well. Uh, but in the meantime, I think I am going to um, play with R2 for a little bit. Thanks for watching.